In studio, Rampage Jackson. We love this guy, man. How are you, Rampage? I'm doing good. Kind of early in the morning. How y'all doing? He goes, last good. time I was here, you guys had a crackhead on. <laughs> I'm like a crackhead. We're trying to figure it out. We're asking I questions. I thought maybe it was one of the homeless guys we had in or something. Right, and we're asking more and more questions. It turns out it was Rich Voss. He goes, you had yeah. a crackhead in here last time I was here. Yeah, crackhead. And then we understood why, because that was the day Rich Voss admitted that he used to wear tiny little Daisy Dukes to like turn on <laughs> his drug dealer to get a little more a little more crack. He, yeah, he found out the drug dealer liked, uh, liked guys. So Rich played up to it to get a better deal. <laughs> That's when you hit rock bottom. That is a true crackhead. <laughs> That's a true crackhead. That's why calling him a crackhead is completely accurate. <laughs> that is worse than a crackhead. And if he's admitting to that, yeah. you know he did things that were just a little more awful than yeah. just wearing that. Yeah. I, I remember that day, too, because like when guys like you come in, we want to look kind of like men and look a little tougher. <laughs> and, we're, and we got Rich Voss telling the story of the Daisy Dukes, you know, doing stuff to drug dealers possibly to get back. <laughs> like, this guy's never coming back on this fairy show. I was, there, I was over there. And we're such a dumb radio show because Voss had a, a thing, an altercation yesterday where he tried throwing karate kicks. Yeah. And we, uh, why oh, did yeah. we not have him in today? No. To at least get an assessment from a, a true fighter, yeah, we uh, uh, on how oh, on what he if he knows awful. anything or not. We, d we did a pilot for Comedy Central yesterday, and one of our uh, Rich Voss, the crackhead, ended up uh, throwing karate kicks uh, to Keith Robinson, who then ended up uh, beating the crap out of him. But yeah, he's one of our Keith's one of our comic friends. Yeah. You know, one of those guys that like what, like when they get pulled over uh, and they go, "Do you know how fast you are going?" He'll go, "What." To the cops like that type of a, uh, he's a, he's a type. one of those guys yeah he's, oh, yeah. yeah he's a problem yeah he's a problem oh he's he a, a problem. problem oh dude does he get out of tickets though when he said that yes because they, they charge him with resisting arrest <laughs> <laughs> yeah they forget about the ticket real quick <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a great story about keith he's told this one where the cops he's just like he's a crazy dude and he's just well you know those philadelphia dudes like they always have they all that yeah. sunny listed mentality yeah. and uh <laughs> they pulled him over and, and he's fighting the cops and he's like in the middle of this like why am I doing this and they pulled mace out and he goes i eat mace for breakfast <laughs> <laughs> so they tested him and uh, it didn't go down as well as he no. thought <laughs> maybe he, really he needs <laughs> bacon and eggs with it he really said that to Kyle. Oh, yeah, i eat mace for breakfast ah! who, who would say that uh, who would say that somebody yeah. about to get mace for breakfast <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah he is a problem well, keith but keith is just one of those guys he has a button that's just it would probably make him bad in your profession because he's, he's probably too angry to think yeah, uh, they, in a moment like yeah, that. Yeah, he'll probably gas out because, you know, your mind gets to going. You get so mad, angry. You want to go. You want to annihilate this guy. Then you're probably like, man, please slow down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was jumping around in this ring yesterday before uh, the actual event. With, he was with doing Rich. a sunny list, and man, and he, he, was, he, was he was so psyched because he had the gear on. He had the yeah. gloves and everything. And he, he was so psyched to just punch somebody. And, and he, you know, he, he went after Rich. And just punched him in the head many times, very hard, and got Rich really aggravated to the point where Rich kicked him. Who, the crackhead? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The crackhead started karate in his ass trying to karate kick. But he's why not a good. A, why you got to beat up on a crackhead like this? <laughs> well, well Voss, Voss kicking. Voss, him oh, kicking right. is like an old woman swinging her purse yelling, Masher. <laughs> <laughs> he's not. We saw him throw a kick. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. About 10 years ago, it was a girl I was dating. We were standing in front of this Chinese place and Voss was like, I used to take karate. We're like, let's see a kick. He threw a straight, stiff leg kick and he slipped in garbage juice <laughs> <laughs> and he garbage fell juice. ass and back in the garbage juice in the sun. <laughs> I've never been happier than to watch that idiot oh is that garbage great <laughs> you know the stuff that leaks out of the garbage bags it's wonderful liquid if you're doing karate yeah, <laughs> I, that's a new nickname for one of my friends <laughs> garbage, garbage juice, garbage <laughs> juice. <laughs> thanks bro thanks dog <laughs> garbage juice and a crackhead <laughs> they go together huh? oh how hard were you laughing I, I've never been happier about anything because he went down when you throw a straight a straight kick yeah and you slip <laughs> you're going right on your tailbone and he was in his late 40s it was nothing I've never been happier to see anything yeah happen good right oh, oh, okay okay I thought you said a crackhead did that. Oh, no, Voss. Voss. The, it was Rich it was Voss. Rich Voss. Oh, the guy. Same guy. The ex crackhead. The crackhead. Yeah. yeah. Now we're calling oh, him the crackhead. The crackhead with the slipped in garbage juice. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Trying to act like he knew how to handle himself. Oh. Rampage, you got a great laugh. Do you, like, use that laugh when you're beating the crap out of someone? I would, no. I would like to imagine that you're just. 
No, I, destroying someone and laughing the entire time. No, I don't. I don't normally laugh after the fight if I won and something I'm in the locker room. Like, yeah, uh, you know, I'm happy <laughs> then. But damn, I'm fighting, man. I'm serious, dog. Yeah, yeah I'm serious. I make jokes and stuff like that. But as soon as that octagon closed and everybody said, "Let's go," yeah. I'm, I'm serious until I whoop his ass. It, it's hard to imagine you're only a light heavyweight. Yeah, because I, I, I look like a heavyweight right now. I put on a few LBs. No, uh, you, you. I, I can't imagine they're even, they're bigger than you is what I'm saying. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm 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 average size for a lightweight. Like Forrest is actually bigger than me. Uh, Tito's uh, he looked bigger than me. He got a big ass head and big shoulders, <laughs> but he had a little bit of tiny legs. So. <laughs> oh really? Tall, you know. Chuck is taller than me. I'm I'm average size. I'm average light heavyweight size. We we used to do a bit and we had to stop it, but uh, Tito came in here uh, back in the day. This goes back probably uh, five or six years ago. Yeah. And we wanted to see uh, how long Steve. Our big guy Steve, how long he could last against Tito? It took four seconds, and I think <laughs> I think we had to call an ambulance and we had to stop the bit because <laughs> I would love to see a rampage to the same that this guy, Steve. Would you, would, would you uh, twelve seconds you lasted? Yeah. Twelve, Tito. 12. No, you yeah. didn't. But you've retired from that bit, right? Yeah. You don't uh, want Rampage Jackson to I, I would to love that to record. see uh, the tape of that because uh, I, I well, think it was quicker than 12 seconds. Maybe 11 seconds. <laughs> uh, you're <probably laughs> me right now. I'm, I'm out of shape. I've just been hanging out and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> is that it? Yeah, yeah, you've just been hanging? Right he doesn't <laughs> want a lawsuit is basically what he's yeah. how long? <laughs> how long does it take you to get back into fighting shape once you... Uh, Fight in shape? Yeah. Uh, like from the condition, because you say from, you're out of shape, today, which is from, hysterical. From but yeah, from today, I, let's I, can, I can get in fighting shape in eight weeks from today. Really? It, it'd be a lot of hard work. I'd be sore, get a massage twice a week or something like that. But in eight weeks, I could be in fighting shape. If I had to be in fighting shape, and I could do it in eight weeks. How many hours a day? Uh, to put them together, I'd probably train like a, 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 probably like a, a five and a half. If you, wow. if you, if you add running. <laughs> I do 35 minutes on the elliptical, and I'm like, man, I can eat whatever I want now. <laughs> I can eat whatever I want. <laughs> and I was interested if we were talking about like getting LASIK surgery and stuff like that, and, you know, and, and you wear uh, you wear lenses. Does that affect you when you fight or not? No, at all? I take it, no, I take them out because I can see. You know what I'm saying? But I just can't see people's faces from far away or or street signs stuff like this. So I take my contacts out when I fight. I don't you know? I can see. Good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Just run to the other end of the ring. Yeah. <laughs> just stay there. Yeah, I just stay away from you. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can see. Fine. I just can't see the crowd. I don't, I don't want to see the crowd face anyway. I, got, I have tunnel vision. You know, I don't want to see the crowd anyway. Most of them be ugly, man. You look at a front row. <laughs> How your ugly ass get a front row seat? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Dana White. <laughs> it's Dana White, the president. My, my bad. Dana. <laughs> How much does the the crowd affect you uh, when they're if, if they're cheer have they have ever been cheering for the other guy? Yeah, I'm telling and you're you that. In the, and does that affect you or are Man, you dude, focused? I, dude, during the fight, it don't bother me. But after the fight, I got knocked chucked out. I got booed. I was, wow. That, I was devastated because I'm like the most fan-friendly guy ever. And I noticed since that fight, I have not been so fan-friendly with the American fans because I'm an international fighter. I'm, mm -hmm. I, I mostly fight in Japan. It came out of pride and all yeah. that. Yeah. Then I got booed from doing my job and knocking somebody out. I thought it was a sight <laughs> knockout. Then I got booed. I was like, whoa. So I didn't know what fans were really my fans. And some people are fake. They come, they come want your autograph. This will have your autograph and stuff. And so I, 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 I yeah, they, they really bothered me after the fight getting booed. But you know what it is, though, man? Ty Cobb said, because he used to get booed on the road all the time. That's a great compliment. And I, I think Liddell was like the first big name in, in the sport. And, and they're seeing like a great Titan. They're seeing like the, the next uh, group come up, the next generation. That's how they're looking at it. Like, man, our guy just uh, went down. It isn't a weird way of respecting. It's certainly not indifference. But you beat a guy mm -hmm. that they didn't think yeah. was beatable. Um, and it's interesting that you he beat uh, he came back and beat uh, uh, Silva, which was I I was kind of nervous for him. And and Silva beat you twice, and you beat. Ch it's a very weird parody in, in UFC. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Styles make fight and stuff like that. And I think that um, if I would have fought if I would have fought Venelay in the UFC. I would have beat him. That's what I think because Vanille, uh and Pride, he was a, he was a Chuck Liddell of Pride. Right. Mm -hmm. But the thing about Pride and the UFC, which is different, the UFC lets it be real. They let it let happens what happens. But Vanille, if you get the best of him and, and the fight, they'll stop it so Vanille can, you know, recover. Or, or if you beat up Vanille on the ground, which most people do because he's a good stand-up guy, they'll stand they'll stand you up. And that what happened to me. You know, and other fighters that fought Vanderlei Silva. So if I would have fought Vanderlei in the UFC, he probably might have never beat me. Now, is Pride, there was a, this thing, like, when, when Pride, I think those fighters start to come over, people were like, uh, the Pride guys are, is, is UFC a tougher, or, or are they are they pretty comparable as far as uh, where's a tough place to fight? Well, I, I think, to be honest, I think it's, like I said, I think it's tougher to fight in the in, in Pride just because, like, uh, it, it, and I don't know how much I can say, but it, was, it wasn't, like, the UFC is, is ran by regular people. Pride wasn't. 
if, if, if let me put that out there like that, it was ran by other people. The government stuff is different over there. Mm. And, um, so you know, prior anything, they can let anything happen. The referee wanted the other guy to win. He can ch- kind of alter the fight. Oh wow! A little bit. What well, people just don't know, but UFC they they real. I, I was surprised that after I knocked Chuck out that he didn't win by decision. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 no, y- y'all laughing, but in Japan. <laughs> Stuff like that can happen. That can happen in Japan. That can happen in Japan. Wow. You know, you know what I'm saying? It, stuff like that happens, you know, and it was like it was like it was like, whoa. So so, you know, yeah, so, but if you take a fighter from the known as fights in the ring and you put him in a cage, if you never seen a cage before in his life, most time, most likely he's gonna may, you know, people might react different. He might feel like an animal, you know, yeah. he might, you know, get, you know, scared or something like that. So yeah. It's crazy. Mm. You knocking Chuck out was, was, I mean, again, even though you'd already beaten him, it was surprising because, you know, we, we're not used to seeing Chuck just go down. But uh, I think they, they said that that was rated the second best knockout of the year next to uh, Gonzaga knocking out uh, Mirko Krokop, which yeah. I was really Ooh. surprised at. Um, Ooh, yeah. That kind of, you haven't heard much about him. I think he lost again after that, too, didn't he? Yeah, he lost to uh, my friend, uh, one of my trading partners, um, uh, Czech Congo from uh, France. Yeah, and, and uh, it was kind of it was kind of crazy because uh, we was training together for that fight. Me, Check, and my other friend Michael Bisbing, and Check Kungo got hurt, and he started getting sick. And I'm like, "Oh man, you fighting Krokop, dog? You need you hmm. might not take this fight because most time when Krokop get knocked out, he come back the next time and murders the guy. <laughs> Normally, yeah. And I mean, if he loses or something, if he loses or something, he come back and murder the guy the next time. But uh, um. And my boy Chet Congo was 100, percent and he uh, Chet Congo whooped his butt. I'm like, whoa! And then I got much respect. I started bound down. Like, whoa, Chet! Huh. I didn't see the fight. Did he? Did he? Did he beat him standing up, or did he yeah. get him on the ground? He beat him standing up. He wow! Just, if he went to the ground, he beat him on the ground. But my boy Chet Congo, he's a, a Muay Thai fighter. Huh. He, he's like a, he's like a, he's like six three or something like six four, and all rip, all muscle, like two forty, two fifty, and he's like. From Africa, he's a, a French guy from Africa. What kind of mix is that? That's, little, <laughs> that's, great, yeah. that's a little See, crazy. I get a, I get a black guy to talk to me. Who's this? Who's this? What the hell? Is going what is that? A little big guy slap you. Who embarrasses yourself? Yeah. Embarrass yourself. Rampage is African at least. Rampage is in here. Uh, what promoting the Ultimate Fighter? This yeah. sounds like a really good concept. Team Rampage versus Team Forest. What yeah. can you tell us about it? Yeah, I can tell y'all that it's airs on Spike tonight 10 at 10 p.m. Right? Uh, April uh, April second. Oh, April second. April, April second starts. Okay, that's what I can tell. You. I can tell y'all on for real. Uh, I've I've heard it was like one of the best shows. I I never really watched the shows before. I heard it was one of the best best seasons. So you and Forrest, you're both coaching different. Uh, yeah. Different fighters. Different teams. Oh, different. Okay, different teams, and yeah. obviously competing for what? What are they competing for? What What who competing for the fighters? The teams. Yeah, just 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 the fighter. Loss, the, the fighter. It's competing to, to get a uh, what six figure contract. Oh, right? Okay, that's why I mm. think. With the UFC, and the then league. at the end you're gonna fight. Uh... I'm gonna fight for us uh, J- July 5th, I believe. Wow, is that a championship uh, fight? Yeah, I guess every time I fight it's for the championship, baby. I got the belt. It's on the line every time I fight. How does it feel being the guy? Because now you're the mm. guy. Like for a long time it was Chuck, or it's this guy. Now you're the guy that everybody is gunning for. You know what? This, this, I'm just not realizing that now. I'm hearing the interviews and people calling me out. People in other weight classes calling me out. I got this this heavyweight Kimbo Slice. I heard it might it might be true, might not be true. Calling me out. I'm like, hold on, dog. You're not even my weight class. I don't even <laughs> think you can come make my weight class. And he don't even fight in my organization. I got guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn. Why don't you call out the heavyweight champion? They all want a piece of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm that's like, crazy. I was like, is it because I'm black? He's like, no, because I'm black. I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> that would be even worse if he said yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how do you feel about the wrestlers trying uh, trying to make a name for themselves in the UFC? You got Brock Lesnar. What do you think of his debut? You know what? I was very uh, impressed by Brock Lesnar. I think it's good, you know, that. Uh, the pro wrestlers can come over. I think that's a little bit of what our sport needs. Like some of the guys are more character like, but come and and do some real stuff. But Brock Lesnar, he came. And he, he didn't bring any uh, WWE with him. You know, what I'm saying he didn't he didn't act a fool or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. I was kind of hoping he would come out. And, you know, bring some of that. I think we need just a little bit of that. A little right. more smack talk and just a little stuff bit of like that. Why that fight for real? Mm-hmm. You know, back up your smack. But you know, what I'm saying you notice. People watch what they say when they go out they get that uh, kick. Brock, was, Brock didn't do any yeah. smack talk whatsoever. He was Did he? really, really serious. He didn't do no smack talk? I don't think so. And he came out and he was uh he was just all and all business. He did a good job. He almost uh, finished Mirror. He's got to figure out that uh, ground uh, yeah, thing a little yeah. bit, right? I think, I'm telling you, he's going to be champion in the future. I'll tell really? You yeah. Wow. Here's why nobody smack talks, because they break your arms or legs. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's not like boxing where you're just going to get knocked out. It's like, you're relying on a guy, like, as you're tapping, he has to, to stop. stop 
or he's going to snap your leg or break your arm. So if you talk a lot of crap, yeah. he may just go, uh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You go, yeah. oh, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, especially when you go with the guys from, like, Brazil. Because one of the guys, I don't want to say his name, the guy was talking smack at the um, weigh-ins or the interview before. And, and it's part of the game, you know. And, but the Brazilian guy didn't like it. And, and he choked him. And the, and the guy the guy tapped him. Every time I pulled him off, he was still joking. Like, no, nah, he didn't want to. You have to kick him out. I'll wow. kick him out. Yeah, don't play that. Huh. Yeah. You get any? Uh, get in, them. You get into any street fights? Chuck no. Liddell was telling us some great stories, man. Well, when I, you guys get together and have a few drinks, uh, it gets a little ugly sometimes. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I, I don't, I don't, I haven't gotten into a street fight in, in a long time. I think the last street fight I got into uh, since I've been a professional fighter was probably my cousin. Really? <laughs> yeah, man, I got a cousin like six months younger than me, and uh, I actually uh, grew up fighting him my whole life. My mom said I've been fighting her since I was in Pampers, and she remembers. I don't, I don't remember, but she told me, and me and him never got along. But we were like the best of friends growing up, you know, because his mom and my mom, like uh, his mom is my mom's niece, right? And we grew up together. They grew up, and I grew up with this guy. I can't stand. I love him, my cousin, <laughs> but I can't stand him. And we was kind of like we was the bad guys of the family. I was getting trouble. So, so once I got, you know, become a professional fighter. You know, so I come back home and visit and stuff like that. And then he still remember me fighting him all the time. He he messed with me. And he said, ah, ha, 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 you can't beat me up now. You're professional fighting and stuff like that. So no, man, I don't want to mess with you no more. I, I've changed, you know. I, I used to fight on the street a lot. I said, now I don't have to prove myself. I, then he, he, he did something to me that pissed me off. And then next you know, it, the old, old flash, my old memories came back. I just whooped his ass real quick. <laughs> oh, man. I like, oh, I felt bad. That's but kind of sucked but he to knew me, how, him. Yeah, but he knew how to press my buttons. He like, he knows how I am. He come and just pinch both my nipples. I'm like, man, what the hell wrong with you? <laughs> Like he, he knows me for my whole life. He knows I don't like stuff like that. He just comes and pinks my nose. He just actually, he, I guess he wanted to see how a professional ass whooping felt. <laughs> <laughs> see, I'm just the opposite. That would endear me to somebody. Like, oh, hey, you would get a, you would you, get a, Yeah, you would get a tee hee from Jimmy if you did that to him. Yeah, I like I that. Like, I need that. I, yeah. I don't like. I don't like that. I, I, I don't even like girls pinching my nose. You don't like a girl to do it? I don't like oh, a pinch. No, come on, no. pinch both. My, I don't. I don't like no. that. I'm not, I, I'm not a fan either. I I hear it's a little weird, Jimmy. It's a little weird, man. Come not, on. Not pinching. I like a brush. Like like a light pop. Like, brush. That's, that's different. Oh, okay. All right, good. You, yeah, pinching is kind of different. You know, on what was called the purple nurple, <laughs> where they would <laughs> no. twist in uh, school or something uh, like that. Uh, that deserves a professional beating. Uh, you know what? They, they should let that be legal in the UFC. Actually, it's not illegal, so <laughs> you guys might see that in my next fight. <laughs> <Purple nurple. laughs> I'm, I'm going to look at the camera. It's going to be for you guys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> twist. <laughs> Guy taps out. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> that, is, that, is not, hey, that is not in the rule book. I'm going to have my manager look it up. That is not in the rule book. Forrest Griffin, watch out for the purple what is it? The purple nurple. nurple. The purple nurple, <laughs> homie. That is how demeaning would that be? You get your ass kicked oh. and you get a purple nurple. When the guy's got that surprise look that you just did it, you just clock him in the face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's done. Did he just give me a purple nurple? <laughs> and are people asking you a lot about the, uh, the Liddell rematch of third? Because you're the only guy he hasn't beaten. I know. So so what's the problem? So what's up with that? Two, okay, I would understand if he would have beat me the second time, but mm -hmm. now it would be a rubber match. I, you know what? I don't care. I think if I beat Chuck a third time, they'll be like, okay, when's the rematch? <laughs> you want to fight him? I fight him. It's uh, my job to fight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Chuck, I think Chuck draws a big pay-per-view, and that's what I like. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit here and, and um, say I fight for uh, other, any other reason besides money. You know? What do you see, What do you see as Chuck's weakness that uh, you've been able to beat him twice? Like, what, what does he do that allows you to get in there and... Uh... Yes. He gets in the ring with me. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's <laughs> no, his weakness. No, 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 I, not to be cocky or anything, but I feel like, you know what I'm saying, I'm the, I feel like I'm the best fighter in the world. Every time I lost, I know why I lost, you know what I'm saying? Most people say this and make, say make excuses and stuff like that, but I'm keeping it real. I'm, I'm tell y'all a secret about me. I'm, I'm real. I have no shame. You know what I'm saying? I have no ego. I'm keeping it real. You know what I'm saying? I get my ass kicked. I, I've lost five times. I was disqualified once, but every time I've lost, you know what I'm saying? I know why I lost. You know what I'm saying? And if I go in a, a, a fight close to 100%, I'm pretty confident that I'm going to win, mm. and, and it's nothing. Jeez. I don't care. I don't care how many people Chuck knocks out. I don't care what he do or this that. I'm confident that I'm going to win. Very cool. And he made. The, they said that that body mistake uh, Chuck made was something that he just. He, there was some kind of a body punch he threw that he never yeah. should have thrown against you. Yeah, because uh, I have uh, my own style of defense. I think I have like some of the best defense in mixed martial arts. Because I, I, I believe if a guy can't hit you or, or take you down or kick you or whatever, you know, then you can. You got a good chance of kicking his ass. Hmm. So. Chuck knew that from our first fight. And I'm pretty sure he watched the tapes on on um, on, on our fight, and uh, he saw my defense style. And he probably thought that since I have a certain style of defense, that I leave my body open. And Chuck actually has one of the best body shots in MMA. 
And he hit mm-hmm. me with a body shot. Our first fight, I know he remember hitting hitting me, and it was at the end of the round. Thank God, you know. But oh, my, you felt that one. I felt that one because uh, <laughs> and, and, and my sport, if you take a knee from a body shot, the fight's over because they can punch you. In boxing, you get a, a count. If you take if you take a, like a you can't take a knee from a body body shot. You can't go like we go down from a body shot. Oh, you can, go down. They, yeah, they can punch yeah, you. Yeah, it's why, over. <clears throat> why don't any of these shots break a rib or something? Some some do. Like, if any of us got hit, like you guys are getting hit in that ring, it, well, yeah. it, we would be I think destroyed. We're built a little no, differently. no, but what makes it different? Because you're a human yeah, when it comes down to it. Because we, because we, ex- we got muscles. Because we exercise and we, and we, our body, your body get uh, a tolerance towards things. We build it up and we get punched there and stuff a lot. Right, right, right. Yeah. So yeah. the muscle around it is pretty solid and, and kind of takes a punch, but they still get broken ribs. Yeah, we still get broken. I see them guy get broken ribs, but so that's why Chuck do the body shot because he figured. That's gonna be his his out, you know. Say so he knew my defense pretty good, so he tried. If you watch the fight, dissected, he tries to set me up for it, I, like he's going to throw a hook, you know. Then he, I, and Chuck has the best setups. Chuck is the is a damn good fighter. Yeah. When you dissect and you break him down, and I knew I was in there with the best, so I had I, and I had to train for the best, and I, I prepared. I had the best trainers around me. You guys have no no idea. I had the best trainer, and then for that camp, I had the best sparring partners. I flew uh, sparring partners from all over the world. We just me. want you two to get along. Because we like both you guys. Hey, Chuck is cool. We just want you guys to get along. Me and Chuck can sit right here (laughs) and and kick it like uh, when me and Chuck fought in the tournament in Japan. Yeah. We both won our fights. We knew we was fighting each other the next time we would see each other. But we was in the bar buying each other drinks. Uh, That's cool. I I have so Mm -hmm. much respect for Chuck. He's a a, a good guy. Where you at with uh, Silva? You had some bad blood there. Yeah, me and Silva don't even talk to each other. Hmm. Oh, you don't like You genuinely don't like him. Because I I keep it real. um, I guess he gets mad because... <clears throat> Excuse me. Silva is the type of guy that thinks everybody should be afraid of him. Every fighter, he wants everybody to be afraid of him. And uh, and the way I react around him is different from other fighters who fight him. I'm not afraid of, of Vanley Silva because I I've, I've seen his fight tapes. Like they call him X murder because when he was you know come all his fights he he really ain't fought a whole lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They just throwing him chomps and he just go out there and murder them because they chomps right. So I'm like you know what I'm saying? This guy a chomp murderer. I'm not scared of this guy. So I hang around. <laughs> I speak my mind at press conference. I say whatever I want to say. He, he look at me all crazy, like like I was a back down. Like man, dude, I'm from the streets, man. I know you, you know what I'm saying. I don't get intimidated by guys like you. And I go yeah. out there and I fight him, and I fight him straight up. I fight Chuck. Forty five minutes later, I fight Vanille. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? And and, and, and I'm kicking his ass, and they, and they stand me, and they stand me up because he's a champ. They want to win the tournament. And I and I, and I and I vocalize that. You can go back and watch the fight, and you can see his corner man telling the referee. To stand him up, and what people, what, what American people don't know is that Vanille is smart. His team is smart. He had a, a Japanese manager in Japan, and 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 Japanese in Brazil stick stick together. There's more Japanese in Brazil than anywhere inside the Amer- in, in the world besides Japan. You know what I'm saying? Right, so they right. stick together, and he had a Japanese manager, and, and I, I think some of the referees get take payoffs and, and prize. Mm. I'm Amazing. telling you. That's why I like the UFC so much because they, they they ain't with that. And but in Pride in Japan, I promise you that you just didn't trust them. Hey, I. I Wow. We heard that you never saw two girls one cup. How did that come up? I uh, the the girl that brought me here uh, said something about two girls. I thought she said two girls one cop. I'm like two girls one cop, and she said, "Yeah, they was crapping and throwing up." I said, "Well, they call it two girls one cop. What the police come in there? <laughs> they should have got arrested, right? You know." Said, <laughs> You've never seen this. I never seen. Uh, just uh, just react to it. Just, I can't because we got just watch. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let, here, let get here, close. Here. Don't get, get close, close, man. We got a mic for you over there. And we, we show this yeah. to everybody. We show this to all the big it's, the big stars that we're come very in. proud of. Uh, I don't think will throw this. I don't think Rampage will be thrown. He's seen some stuff in his day, but let's let's see if we get a reaction out of Rampage. Have my seat. Of course you can. You can have the radio show if you want. <laughs> the, chair, the chair and your seat. <laughs> right. Here's uh, Two Girls, One Cup, uh, Rampage Jackson. Where Check it they? out. Where are they? Uh, just in a little in setting. doctor's office. Yeah, you know. Just getting an exam. Starts out nice, right? It's a little something. Nice, and then uh, you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's That's cringing. A lot of crap. <laughs> He's cringing. Not gonna throw oh, uh, they look at it like ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Whose crap was that? <laughs> That's fake. No, it's real. No, no, no. They crapped in a cup. Then they, then they changed it to something else. Yeah, wow. Well, they're probably dumping <laughs> out, but they're dumping out like That's crazy. Chocolate ice cream. That's what oh. I think. Well, that's not ice cream, though. <laughs> that wasn't ice cream. All right, so this is not going to work. No, he's, gonna... I told you, he's not going to be nah, thrown. Yeah, yeah. No, he's not thrown. Yeah, I mean, I'm a fighter, dog. Yeah. yeah. Does this bother you? <laughs> Does that bother you? These girls are 
sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly <laughs> are. Who's going to date those two girls but each other? No. Uh, right. Yeah, no one's going to want to. Yeah. <laughs> Is that insane? You're not going to want to, like, good. kiss I, them. I, or... You never, you never want to be the same. Like, you watch this video, I'm like... Come on, man! They're not like, even thrown. You know what he's seen? Well, he's lived in Japan. I mean, they get they get old crazy there with man, some stuff. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> one of one of my friends back in the day was kind of crazy. And he he he's a he one of them internet geeks, and he he showed me some some crap eaters. And I was like, yeah, that's that's not compared to some stuff I saw some Japanese people do. On, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, that's a, that's a weird culture <laughs> over there. That's yeah, a weird culture, you know. They, it's weird. I can't talk no more about that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we got to take a break. Uh, the Ultimate Fighter is uh, Team Rampage versus Team Four. So you're saying it starts April 2nd at 10 p.m., right? Yeah. On Spike TV? Spike TV. And your website is allrampage.com? How do you know that? I, we, we do a little research here. Okay, yeah. That's good, right? Yeah, it's good. Allrampage.com. Allrampage.com. All it's always a pleasure there, Rampage. Hey, anytime. I love you guys, man. Y'all cool as hell. All right, cool. Hey, tell the crackhead Jew I said what's up. All right. <laughs>